doesn't ride, the Netherlands don't qualify because they're out of it in the moment in 21st position. So um, here's how they line up in order of their country then. This was the pick. The Czech Republic got the first pick from the Portuguese, the Greeks, the Ukraine. USA with gate five ahead of Ireland, Austria and Italy. There are the names, of course. And I guess for Team Ireland, all their eyes will be on uh, their backup rider. And of course, uh, they'll be looking to, uh, to get a decent result and uh, just looking to see. Actually, where is my... Uh, it is Richard artist. Bird, and uh, I have to say, not a rider I know much about. Yeah, I don't know too much about him either, and... Um, what was his time, actually, in... He uh, was... Uh, Richard Bird was in 30th place uh, with a 151.9, so uh, they really are looking for him to... Uh, do his best this time as you say they can drop a score so uh, that's uh, no disrespect for him and uh, hopefully they're going to get through in those top 19 places and not have to resort to the b final yet again well there's the times in the open practice were brian villapoto for 137.9 he was one and a half seconds quicker than jeffrey hurlings glacier paulan was third ahead of guanieri Tonus albertson for puerto rico brad anderson for great britain three seconds down on villapoto and it was gareth swanapool and strybos with brett metcalf down in 10th but metty or medi as they call him back uh, back there in the u.s um, said he just found it just difficult to get into and everything else, but now that he had that ride under his belt, he was uh, looking forward to the race, and obviously the race is different to the lap and, and that kind of thing, so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, hopefully a good performance from Brett Metcalf. They need it. If Australia, they're going to go through to the main event without having to go through the, uh, the last chance, the B race. Well, you wouldn't want to be in the B race if Australia were in it, would you? Well, as only one goes through, that's uh, exactly right, yeah. Um, Sunday morning as well, don't forget, that's an extra 20-minute race that you have to take out of your day's schedule on race day, which is not ideal. 15-second board is up for the final time today. Third race, MX Open. We're about to get underway here. And away they go, and the roost off those big 450s as the riders jostle for position going into that first turn. Oh, we've got somebody going straight on and into the fence and sends the photographer sprawling right down there in that first corner. But look at that, Ryan Villapoto out front with... Uh, Is that who's Paul that? Lane? It might be... Uh, no, Gautier Paulin, yeah, in second position. Good shout. And then we've got... Is that the Italian? Guarneri in third. The Swiss, I think, maybe Tonus in fourth position. So, uh, some good hitters up there at the top of the hill. Who Paul was that? Is that Brad Anderson there in fifth position? No, 27, I think that was. Luis Correa, Portugal. Arno Tona's got a good gate for Team Switzerland in fourth. Martin Mitchell, Strybos for Belgium in sixth. Brett Metcalf, eighth in front of Gareth Swanepoel, ninth. Uh, Jeffrey Hurlings is out there. Yeah. Twelfth place for the number 112, Jeffrey Hurlings. And uh, Richard Bird for Team Ireland, 17th, but no sign of Brad Anderson. And I wonder if Brad Anderson was one of the reasons why uh, he's down at 28th at the moment, probably got caught up going through that first turn, maybe with that guy that was bouncing his way through that first corner. Certainly that wasn't Brad Anderson that went down there, but Arnold Tonus there in that fourth position, riding number 33, four team Switzerland down there in the red. He's, uh, well, another rider that's stepping up from MX2 to MX1 this weekend. I would in say this he's, nation's event. He, I would say he's probably suited to that, though. A big, tall rider and very, very smooth style. So uh, he would suit the 450. Strybos in the background there. Team Belgium, number six, the first yellow rider in shot at the end of that wave section. And uh, just ahead of him, that's Martin Macek. I think that was the 127, the Czech rider. And he was up the inside, actually, going in through the, uh, the on the start line. So yet again, we've got Team USA first, Team France second. That's pretty much the way it's been all day long. Gautier Paulin, probably the only rider in the whole field today who's retained his normal number. <laughs> Good shout. Well, that's it then. Fake destiny and all the rest of it, wasn't it? But a nice line there for Grenieri at the top of the hill, doubling his way in, then slingshots his way around the outside as he tries to stay ahead of Arnold Tonus, who's closing right upon the rear wheel of the Italian. Of course, these guys... Don't have to push. I'm just looking down on the list now. Team Switzerland, where are they in terms of the overall classification at the moment? They're probably not great down in 19th, so they really need a result here from uh, Arnold Tonus because they need to throw away the 24th place from Yves Falato, who was the MX1 rider in that first race. There's Paul just going out of sight. There's Guarneri in third. 
the Yamaha, the red sleeves of Tonus is fourth. And Brad Anderson now in 20th position, so he's got a bit of work to do. And hopefully the Brits can throw away this result, but depends on how far up the order he actually gets. He's got 17 minutes plus two to go in which to do something about that. I'm guessing the guys that he's ahead of him, Sergei Stakin, the Russian, Matthias Walkner, Vitytas Buches, the Lithuanian, and Tom Soderstrom. Those guys, he should be able to find a way past Garrett, uh, Gert Kresanov and Ivo Steinberg's right. Who was the rider that got ricocheted down into the... Uh, Photographers and what happened? Oh, he that got was caught. Brad. Yeah, it was Brad. He got forced well wide. Look at that. And Brad did go down as well. Got caught in the tough blocks. And somebody else went down as well, just out of shot as he sprawled his way to his hands and knees. But look at the lead that Ryan Vinopoto has at the moment 141.9. That's a similar time to what Dean Wilson had in the. Uh, in a qualifying race, uh, Ryan Dungey with a 137.7 in his race, 141.6 for Dean Wilson in the MX2 race, and at the moment 141.9 for Ryan Villapoto, who was already four and a half seconds ahead of Gautier Paulat at the start of the second lap, of which they're on now, they're about to complete. We've just heard Ryan Villapoto go up the hill, passed out, commentary position. And Paulan, I'm not sure if he's just doing enough to try and save himself here because obviously riding the 450, if he goes too quick today, too hard today, and of course the danger is he has nothing left for tomorrow. Uh, maybe just trying to keep a lid on it here for obvious reasons, wants the show to take place tomorrow, uh, especially for the French fans. And uh, well, the 127, Martin Macek and uh, Metcalf. So Brett Metcalf there on that Suzuki for Team Australia. He's in seventh position at the moment. He just goes into that sixth position, sorry, ahead of Martin Macek, and he heads downhill in pursuit of Kevin Strybos for Team Belgium. I'm just wondering whether uh, Steve Dixon, the team manager for Arno Tonus on the Cosworth Yamaha there, is uh, looking at this and thinking about next year because Tonus does look comfortable on an MX1 450 machine. Hurling's in ninth place. Keep an eye on him. Depends on how badly he's hurt as well. We've seen him. Oh, who's that gone down there? Uh, 84, that's one of our, uh, well, that was a guy whose teammate ended up with Titas Bruches, the Lithuanian, uh, his teammate in the uh, MX2 category a moment ago. That's the guy that held up Ken Robson at uh, that drop down before the final turn towards the end there when he was going after. The B final beckons, I think, for Here's them. Hurlings. Hurlings on a 350. He's down in ninth at the moment. And, uh, well, just in a moment ago, he's got, uh, well, Gareth Swanepoel ahead of him there, look, 118. The South African, of course, these two nations didn't compete in this event last year. Hurlings has ridden the 350 in the last two Belgian championship rounds, of course, and uh, won both of them convincingly, so it's not his first time out there. Looks good on it as well, actually. Yeah. He's going to smooth out his riding style, I think, certainly. We're still with Guneri in third. That's the red of Tonus fourth, the yellow of Belgium. Kevin Strybos in fifth place. And just behind them, Martin Macek in, uh, well, sorry, it's Metcalf now in sixth, just coming out of view at the top of the picture. So uh, Brett Metcalf, he's going to be looking at trying to take certainly the next two positions away from Arnold Tonus and Kevin Strybos. Strybos back in the factory Suzuki squad in place of... Uh, Steve Ramon and, uh, of course, uh, the uh, rest of the team that he's back in, having been on the factory squad for four or five years, then was uh, ousted out in favour of Clement DeSalle. DeSalle injured and out for the rest of the season. Strybox back in and, it has to be said, grabbing his chance with both hands. Was it... That's right. Um, that was Kendra Dyker that uh, got ousted in favour of DeSalle. Or in favour of Strybox because Ramon remained there, didn't he? Could be. Um, but uh, neither of those guys here, DeSalle or uh, Dedeika, nor Ramon, of course. But uh, Gauthier Paulin, just trying to keep a lid on it, I think. We know that he can ride that 450. Didn't look like he had any problems as well when we had the pre-grid interview with him just a moment ago. He's got Ranieri just behind him. And uh, I think it's just about trying to be consistent. I was talking to his mechanic here uh, yesterday. And um, he was saying, yeah, we, we're going to try and have to tell him to calm down. That was their plan in terms of, you know, uh, Saturday's activities. And so I wonder how much of that we read into Gautier Paulin uh, being eight and a half seconds down on Ryan Villapoto after just three laps. But uh, of course, he did win his uh, 450 debut in the Motocross of Nations in Italy, French yeah. Accorda, 2009. So we know he can ride the bike. Brett Metcalf all over the back now of Arnold Tona, so he's whittled down that gap. Has Metcalf, he was three seconds down on the guy ahead of him, Arnold Tonus. Strybos has gone through as well. 
So Brett Metcalf then on the right. There's a left-hand side as we now look at it on that yellow Suzuki riding for Australia. Metcalf is uh, fastest rider on circuit at the moment with a 142.3. That was his personal best. Yeah. So um, 142.4 for uh, Strybos, a 143.3 for Domingo Guarneri. Of course, uh, 142.2 for uh, Ryan Villapoto, who now goes 10 seconds clear of Gautier Paul. And a little bit further down, where's Brad Anderson for Great Britain? He's up in 15th position at the moment as Metcalf goes to, uh, well, he switches it back nicely there as he jumps down the hill. And he's going to try and go around the outside. No, he switches it to the inside on, on Arnold Tonus, the Swiss rider. And this would be a good enough result for the Swiss to go through. So uh, no pressure there then for Arnold Tonus or Brett Metcalf for that matter because they're down there in, what, 18th, 19th position at the moment. But they'll be able to drop Matt Moss's score on getting, so... Uh, well, that'll be the plan. Yeah. In fact, as it stands at the moment, that would have changed as well. As Grenieri now all over the back of Gauthier Paul and for second position. Uh, the USA had the French, the Italians, the Belgians, Australia would be up to fifth. Great Britain would be down to sixth. Then it'd be South Africa, seven. Switzerland would be eight. Portugal would be nine. Spain, ten. Estonia would be 11. Austria with 12. Austria would go through. So too would Russia in 13th place. Haven't even seen where a stake in is as uh, Grenieri looks to continue trying to find a way past the Frenchman, the favourite here in this particular race, Gauthier Paul. The Danes would go through, so too the Czechs, the Germans, the Dutch would go through in 17th position with this result from Jeffrey Hurlings. So too with Japan and Ireland, they would all be on 27 points. So uh, look at that, 27 for Japan, 27 for Ireland, 27 for Finland. And then it's into the B final, we're going down to pit lane. I'm in pit lane with Thomas Travasini. Now Thomas, Davide Guarneri is running one of his best results so far in third place. It's such a great team. And what do you expect from them this weekend? very motivated he likes very much the track and he wants to be in front of everybody here because he he likes to be here i'm, I'm confident for the race thank you thomas we've got ted paul and seeming to uh, hold up the job here a little bit we've got guaneri behind him strivos behind him and we've lost a bit of ground there tonus and metcalf about three seconds further back and there they are in the background, coming into that Monster Energy Wave section, right on the top end of the circuit, the campsite, just behind those trees there. There was a lot of noise, a lot of activity going on over the back there, Roger. I don't know if you were aware of that, but I certainly got caught. Oh, was that... Uh, no, I thought Guarneri just caught the green fencing there in the background. So Paul and then hanging on to second. Oh, Strybos neatly up the inside of Guarneri, number 15. And Guarneri will try to fight back on the Belgian, gets alongside him, and he's not going to give up easily. Here's Guarneri as he tries to go around the outside here. He's not going to allow Strybos to transfer across. Although Strybos does transfer, Q80 rider just in the way there, at the back of the pack. But look at Strybos going after the Italian. This is second, third and fourth, all in the same shot. Nine minutes plus two laps to go, Metcalf sixth. Uh, Swanepoel 7, Hurlings 8 now, Michek 9, Campano 10, Correa, Kresinov, Lingard, Anderson 14th, Steinbergs, uh, Hiroki Arai, the Japanese in 16th, then it's Tony Balbi in 17th, Tom Soderstrom, Sergei Astekin, and Jimmy Albertson for Puerto Rico down in 20th place at the moment, so maybe he got, maybe it was him that actually went down in the first turn, who knows? But this is the move from Kevin Strybos up the inside of Guarneri, he took a look over to see what was happening, he knew he was there, went on the gas just a little bit too early, could have squared off and squared off again at the top, but he did that anyway, right at the top end through that second corner. Schiffer is down in 21st for Germany. Goethe is 22nd. Richard Bird is dropping down the order here. Can't afford to lose too many places, Richard Bird. Down in 23rd place. Again, we'll look at that in the next couple of laps to see if they are still in contention for a, uh, a transfer spot direct from the, uh, the qualifying races today. Roger Warren, you've gone quiet. Are you OK? Yeah, no, no, I was uh, just checking. I'm surprised with uh, Gareth Swanepoel, Brett Metcalf. Well, he's uh, struggling to get by Arno Tonus. I thought Swanepoel, who's on a roll at the moment, of course, on the MX2 class, I thought Gareth would have uh, been further up the order at the moment. Jeffrey Hurdings, I would guess, is still hurting from that earlier crash, running in eighth, because he was a good second in qualification this morning. But uh, look, Paul Ann under pressure now. The French crowd will groan if he loses any places today. 
The French rider, there he is, number 21, GP21 Gaultier Paul Nunn, the elegant, stylish ex-BMX world champion in his younger days, who then turned to motorised two-wheeled sport. But Guarneri lining him up down the hill, inside turn, is he close enough? Not this time. Strybos just sat in there, waiting to pick up the pieces, should this go wrong, but there they are. Meanwhile, at the front, Ryan Villapoto is 13.6 seconds in front. Yeah. That's why you're not seeing him on screen, is he's completely out of shot. Yeah, and it's a pretty good display. He's been relaxed uh, to his fourth nations as well, of course, for Ryan Villapoto, the first one, Matley Basin, then he did Donington Park. He also did the, uh, the one at Bud's Creek as well. Uh, Missed it last year. Bud's Creek, I remember on the MX2, he won his race there. He won all half a lap. the races there. He was dominant. He won the yeah. overall, the outright, both races on an MX2 machine. And he was half a lap in front on the MX2 bike. He got great starts. He, they stuck him up the inside. He got good power going down into turn one. And once he was there, well, that was it. No one saw which way he went. And it was, like you say, a masterful performance, a great display from uh, the uh, two-time champion this year. Of course, he was Supercross champion. We've got a back marker in there, getting involved with David Aguaneri. And that was the 133 of, uh, well, Manolis Givalos of Greece. Well, that's his moment of fame gone. Did well to get down that step down, though, <laughs> with a nice little seat bounce technique. Yeah. So that's played right into the hands of the number six, Kevin Strybos, as he closed up on number 15, Davide Guarneri for Team Italy. Gautier Paulin let off the hook a little bit in that little exchange with the back marker. No, not too much, though, because there is Paulin, 21. Uh, a little bit of stuff around the rear wheel. The track tape from the number nine, or the number six, I'd say, Strybos. Uh, yep, Strybos. Brad Anderson running 13th now for Team Great Britain, just behind Gert Krestinov. Can't believe how good condition the circuit is, actually. Good lines, uh, it's drying out just nicely, it's not been overwatered, it's not been over-rotivated. Well, they were just talking about that, again, talking to the track builders, they say they are going to have to do some watering at the moment, because apparently it's quite uh, rutty and soft on the inside lines, but uh, really hard-baked on the outside. So whether they'll do any uh, rotation or anything, I'm not, I'm not sure. Well, normally, like corners like this here, where there are deep ruts, they'll flatten them out. Uh, the one, a couple of corners from the finish line, they'll flatten them out because when they actually do water the circuit, they're not going to be then filling up ruts with water, which is going to be no good to anybody because as soon as the water's out, that's it, job done. So they will pull the corners back in where they have to. They'll fix all the ruts on the jumps if there are any. I'm sure there are on one or two. But the watering will be done evenly. I think of course, this is where, sorry, this is where uh, I think Strybos got that track tape wrapped up in the rear wheel. Of course, less uh, less action on the track than there is during a normal Grand Prix weekend as well. Well, yeah, normally we have, uh, well, these guys get two sessions at least, and they're the qualifying race, so that's six sessions alone. And that's basically all we've had today, you know, two uh, a practice session each and a qualifying race each. Then, of course, when we have veterans and Europeans, they get a couple of sessions in a race as well. So, yeah, the track normally gets a hammering on a Saturday, but holding up real well. And the, well, these guys here, even this late in the day, never had it so good in terms of uh, the, the actual condition of the ground. Gautier Paulin. Three minutes plus two laps left to go in this one. And at the front, Villapoto just steamrolling his way. 17.7 in front. Just going further and Brunieri further. Up the inside, holds a tighter line, pushes Paulin wide who tries to retaliate. So the Italians go wild down the bottom of the hill there as Guineri goes into second position. So this will be four points for Italy. Two from Tony Cairoli, two from Guineri. And that's a nice problem to have if you can get rid of those six points, that six place finish from Alessandro Lupino. Of course, I'm sure they'll still go through should there be a problem with Guineri in the closing stages of this moto. But look at this, he set him up, went round the outside, got the distance, but Paul knew he was there, didn't really want to get involved and allowed the Italian to go through up the inside. And it looks like the Italian may stay there, Guineri, because Paul now coming under attack from Kevin Strybos. And Brett Metcalf, we've lost Tonus. Where's Tonus? He was uh, quite a ways back there. About, look at that, eight seconds behind Brett Metcalf. 112 of Jeffrey Hurlings still continuing to circulate in eighth position. And he's closed up on the blue Yamaha in the green clothing of Gareth Swanepoel. And Tonus 
So that's where Tonus is. So Hurling's here, could actually take sixth position. Well, if he is injured, he's putting up a good show, as we say, at good speed this morning, but he did have that crash through the fencing. It was thought he may have even broken some ribs, but uh, obviously if, not. I'll tell you now, if he's broken ribs, he wouldn't be riding no. out there, not really. Kevin Strybos now making a move on Gautier Paulin. There goes Strybos the long way round. Down the inside, has he got the momentum and the drive? He's going for the turn. No, nope. Paulin knows he's there again. Listen to the noise. They're urging Paulin to try and stay ahead of Kevin Strybos. Of course, the French, we know, will already be through with the positions that they got with uh, their first two races with uh, Christophe Porcel. I'm guessing Paul Lamb will complain of arm pump because uh, he is definitely slowing up this time. You can see that by the fact that David Guarneri has moved comfortably ahead of him and has got a good second place there. Brett Metcalf, five. Gareth Swanepoel, six. Hurling, seven. Tonus, eight. Carlos Campano riding on uh, the factory Yamaha for the rest of the season, riding David Philippart's machine because Philippart's is out injured for the rest of the year. Martin Michek, good result. Brad Anderson, 12th place now, having just gone by Gert Prestonov. And he's got Luis Correa just ahead of him, the Portuguese rider, only, what, two seconds, something like that. And Brad Anderson lapping two seconds quicker, so he's going to be all over the Portuguese any moment now. And well, he's about ten seconds down on Martin Macek, so even with uh, two and a half, three laps to go for Brad Anderson, that's going to be a big ask for him, because Martin Macek, no slouch, um, getting some good results. I think he finished third overall in the MX3 Championship this year. So it looks as though Brad's result will be the one that will be dropped by Team Great Britain, but, uh, well... This is the first time we've really seen Villapoto because he's been so far in front and still turning in lap times. 1.46 was his last lap time, which so slowed down considerably, but a 1.41.08 has pretty much matched his qualifying time this morning. I remember when Ricky Carmichael rode here on the Kawasaki 250 here in the Nations. He had that titanic battle with Sebastian Tortelli in the second moto. Tortelli came out on top, but the Americans had done enough to take the victory. Carl Michael came home in second position. The finish line area was a slightly different position then as well, but Ryan Villapoto not looking too unlike Ricky Carl Michael from then. Of course, Carl Michael was riding the number 11, but... And he's ginger. And that familiar number two, riding there, uh, rider there of uh, the American. Uh, sorry, number three of uh, Ryan Villapoto. Here's Hurlings trying to find a way to pass Gareth Swanepoel, the South African. These two fighting over sixth place at the bottom of the hill. So the big Yamaha 450 against the 350 that Hurlings is riding, that KTM, of course. He'll be enjoying himself out there, even though he's injured a little bit, I guess, Jeffrey Hurlings. He smoothed him out, though, hasn't it? He's not, uh, not as wild as he is on the MX2. Seems to sit up a little bit more on the bike as well. It looks like it's a slightly bigger bike. I don't know if that's a handguards or, uh, you know, just making it look like that, but... Or Looks if like he's hurting, if his ribs are hurting, that may be affecting things for him. Yeah, what? quite possibly, but what? nicely through there. Wheeling, 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 and double, double the last couple. Big gap behind him between, uh, before Anatonis comes through. Eighth place for the Swiss rider. Yeah, again, Anatonis, I wonder how much of that is. Maybe a little bit of arm pump, a little bit of fatigue creeping in. Obviously, trying to go too hard too soon at the start of the moto while he was in there. But uh, <laughs> there's our QH friend again. Just at the top of the hill, but Gautier Paulin coming under pressure now from Strybos. Back marker territory, we've got Brett Metcalf swinging his way around the outside here. He's going to get that momentum up and over the Fox step up. Two corners from the finish line. It's Metcalf who's getting held up at the moment. You can see the number 18, the yeah. Australian Brett Metcalf on the Rockstar Suzuki. Well, he could do it if he gets a clear run at these two. He is faster, but uh, it needs that clear run because they are right in the thick of the traffic at the moment. Paul, what's the best way with these guys? Because they, they really are left, right and centre, aren't they? What's the, what's the technique? Do you shout? Do you just try and pick well, them off? Or? I think it just depends on the circuit conditions, you know. Obviously, we can see some of the lines, you know, they funnel in at the bottom of the hill, then they spread out in terms of the lines, the ruts, how they uh, allow riders to either stay tight, run through the middle, drift out. But, you know, um, if the back marker is not paying attention to the blue flag, then, of course, he's going to be on the race line and you're in danger, aren't you, of uh, being nudged aside or being, you know, passed at the inside if you try to go around them. But, you know, hopefully they realise that they're there and that makes it a little bit easier. But 
you know, it depends where you catch them as well. That's the other thing. But, you know, the obvious way is to try and find a way through as quick as possible. Gautier Paulin just getting held up. That's allowed Strybos, though, to close it. And there you see uh, one of the Finnish guys. I think that would be... Uh, that would be Tony Eriksson. That's the case. Number 42. See there again, Metcalf has lost out big time there. You can see suddenly there he is only just coming into camera shot at the back. Whereas Paul Lan and Strybos muscled their way through. Unfortunately, that caused the lappers to move and sway across right into the path of Brett Metcalf. Gote Paul Lan doing a good job though of holding off Kevin Strybos, who actually I'm, I'm pleased to say he looks like he's woken up on the right side of the bed this morning and uh, got out on the right side as well because uh, he's really up for the challenge here and they, he needs to be and Joel Rulons needs to be as well because obviously they've podiumed every year since 2004 and uh, I think that was the last time they won it actually. Well, it's the ones I'm surprised with is Team Italy because everyone had basically written them off this year because not having the or courtesy of really of uh, Alessandro Lupino but he stepped up to the plate and the Italians are looking good for a podium now. Yeah they are and we've all sort of like pretty much written them off I think in terms yeah. of all the press conference you know the, the podium talk has been about the Americans, the French, the Brits uh, potential top fives joining them would be Australians and South Africans. Nobody mentioned in Italy were they? And uh, with Cairoli and Lupino maybe, maybe they were thinking Lupino was a weaker link, maybe they're Granary, I don't know, but normally you need two good 450 riders, and your 250 is going to be your backup man, but no problems for the Team US riders, because it's going to be three wins out of three for them, it's going to be the maximum score, and I wonder which one of those scores they will drop. Will it be Villapoto? Villapoto got a uh, different front graphic, if you notice. Not just the plain red plate. Yeah, the flag. Well, they've obviously not said anything in technical troll, and uh, I'm sure it's not going to be too much of a problem. At least one of them has the, the red plate, whether it be Dungey or uh, Baggett, which they both do have, then uh, maybe not a problem. But Ryan Villapoto, though, made a fantastic start. He's had a fantastic season as well, Supercross champion in the 450 class after what was a titanic battle with Stuart Reed and Ryan Dungey. And he was a winner in the outdoors as well. And he's a winner here today. He takes the checkered flag. He lights the candles. Ryan Villapoto wins heat three. It's a clean sweep for Team USA. And Guarneri comes over the line in second. Paul and third. And Strybos for Belgium in fourth. Brett Metcalf, the Australian, comes home in fifth. And we wait for Gareth Swanepoel or Jeffrey Hurlings. Who is it? There's a lot of pointing going on here. Is it the South African? No, that's, uh, yeah, it's Gareth Swanepoel. Just a couple of seconds clear of Jeffrey Hurlings. Uh, as Villapoto makes his way to the winner's circle to get himself cleaned up. Probably not even broken a sweat. So, just put it this way, it doesn't get better than this, does it? One, 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 all three riders convincingly winning their races. And, uh, well, you'd be, uh, you'd get very, very long odds on US Team USA not retaining the Peter Chamberlain trophy again this year. But, as we know, this is motocross, anything can happen. The first turn is a lottery in any race, particularly here. Um, we'll see what happens tomorrow. The uh, only thing that is guaranteed is Team USA will be on number one gate pick tomorrow on race day. Yeah, just, just to just let you know, yeah, sorry, uh, number 12, finished 12th. Brad Anderson got himself up from being forced out on the first turn in 12th place for Team UK. Jimmy Albertson riding for Puerto Rico, the American who did the Grand Prix series last year, is uh, in 14th position further down, but uh, Team Ireland not looking good for them. I think they may have slipped into the B final. Let's have a look and see where they finished. Ireland would be in 20th. They're going through to the B final as it stands at the moment. How many times have they done that? One yeah. place out. Every time it happens, they finish one place out and they've done it again. Well, we'll see the actual uh, official points in a moment. We've still got a couple of guys out on track, it sounds like. There's Ryan Villapoto. The girl behind him, Ashley, she's the PR girl responsible for doing just that, making sure the hat goes on, the monster can gets forced into the hand, the goggles get thrown around the neck and all the rest of it. Crucial. Crucial. And uh, she was responsible for uh, helping set up him coming onto the live show this afternoon. Um, and so, uh, obviously, we're very thankful for that. It was a pretty crazy show, actually. We had a lot of riders on that show. A lot of riders. 
Right, here we go, the official confirmation. Looks a little bit like this. I was impressed on the live show how you managed to concentrate with all the uh, monster energy girls all yeah, around you. Still, I was impressed. Still. Villapoto wins from Guneri Paulan. They're certainly through the Americans, Italians, and the French. Strybos was fourth ahead of the Australian Metcalf. Swanepoel, Hernings, and Tonus for Switzerland. Carlos Campano for Spain was ninth ahead of Martin Michek of the Czech Republic. Was tenth. Luis Correa for Portugal ahead of Brad Anderson. Crescent of Albertson, Arai, and uh, Balbi for Brazil. And then it was uh, Steinbergs, Lingard, Soderstrom, and Sergei Astekin. And the rest of the riders down there. Birdie down in 29th place for Ireland. It's a young team down there. Martin Barr is obviously the Irish, is the oldest of the group down there, I would say. But look at that. Two, four, five, nine, nine, eleven. They're the first six scores. Going to an interview. Here's our winner. Congratulations, Ryan Villapoto. Three times pole positions for Team America tomorrow. How was that race for you out there? Uh, you know, it was good. You know, I think our whole team's looking good right now. Um, you know, the track's really deteriorated. A lot of rocks are coming up. So, uh, just it was, for me, it was out there just getting, uh, you know, getting loosened up because I knew we'd already qualified. So, uh, get used to the gate, get used to the track some more. Um, you know, so I, like I said, we're looking good. And as long as we just go out there and ride like we know how, we should be all right. Well, congratulations on the qualification. Win. Well done. So Ryan Villapoto then on course, as are Team USA. They win all three qualifying races here. Ryan Dungey, MX1. Blake Baggett for MX2, Ryan Villapoto in the open category. They take the least amount of points. They're, of course, allowed to drop their worst score, which was a first place finish. So uh, the maximum score of two go to the US. Second in the race, where's David Iguaneri riding inspired for Team Italy. Here he is with Georgia. Congratulations, David Iguaneri. You got that second place. Congratulations to Team Team Italy. Great, great pick for tomorrow. Yeah, and then since when we fixed, fixed the suspension uh, three, four races ago, I coming better and better each race and. Uh, now the track is really well. I make quite good lap time this morning. I had a quite good start. It's one strange for this season because I never get one. And uh, I fighting with the top guy. Villopoto was already gone. Was really fast though. But I will fight for second place. I'm really happy also because in the moment I don't have any contract for next year. And I hope someone can can see me. There's a shout out from Davide there. Congratulations. Well done. <laughs> Nothing like putting yourself into the shop window there. David Guineri doing just that. I don't have a contract. If anybody's out there, nice. then uh, come get me. Come find me. Nice. Uh, we don't have your phone number. We don't have an email address. But uh, that doesn't matter. I'm somewhere in saint jean d'Angely. Go to the town centre. Ask for the motocross track. That's exactly where you'll find me. He'll even supply the pin. Probably. <laughs> I'm sure he will. He's probably got a, a rucksack full down there in pit lane. But a good ride for the Italian there through as well. Go to Paul out of France. Was third. Here he is with Georgia. Go to Paul and Monster Energy Yamaha, 450. Congratulations on that win. Well, the third place win uh, in front of your home crowd. Is that a good gate pick for tomorrow? And are you pleased for where you are with the team? Yeah, with the team, uh, Christoph uh, had a third place, Marvin had a second place, and I had a third place. By my side, just uh, had a really good start. And then uh, on this track, it was uh, different than, on, than in Fermo, you know. The, the track is pretty hard, and uh, with many small stones, and with the 450, it was difficult to. to to where well, is no rut, you know, to turn and, and also in the bump. It was a, a little bit strange, but we're going to walk with most energy amount on my bike and, uh, and of course, going to be better tomorrow. Well, best of luck for tomorrow. Well done. Actually, just during the interview, Roger, you pointed out the goggles there. I was talking to uh, Matthew Lalo's film, Scott, and he said um, he's brought some uh, team colored goggles for their Scott riders. Tommy Searle, of course, Dean Wilson, um, Gautier Paul, and just three of their riders. but. Yeah, they look pretty good out there. Batman, of course, has got a contract for next year with Factory Kawasaki for MX1. Yeah, big 450. And it was nice as well. I mean, this is obviously his final ride on the 450 this weekend, but it was good for him just to get that first Grand Prix victory 